Just like Meatloaf sang 46 years ago, two out of three ain't bad. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gonsoulias. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on whichever podcasting platform you prefer and subscribe to our channel on YouTube, like the video, hit the bell so you're notified whenever our videos go live. Coming up on today's show, what's up with all the pitching injuries around baseball? It's becoming really bad. And some things happened over the weekend, some sniping between the Players Union and MLB. We'll preview the Yankees' first game with the Marlins, which begins later today after the eclipse. And we'll let you know what's happening down in the minors. But first, let's recap the weekend against the Blue Jays. Now, you'll see I'm by myself. It's because my co-host is starting tomorrow. He should be here for Tuesday's show. Let's all cross our fingers that that's what happens. Um, but he should be here for Tuesday's show. So as Meatloaf famously sang in 1978, two out of three ain't bad. Considering how the series started <laughs> with the Yankees being shut out in their home opener for the first time in a really long time, um, I'm glad it, it ended on a high note on Sunday. And we'll do what we usually do, which is recap the weekend backward. So we'll go with the most recent game, Sunday afternoon, a victory. Ah, a victory. Hooray. Um, Luis Heal, let's talk about it. Four and one-third innings, two hits, two runs, four walks, which is a problem. Eight strikeouts, not a problem. <laughs> um, it's a problem when the starters don't last long enough. We'll talk about that with Saturday's game and Clark Schmidt. But for Heal... The biggest issue for him is command, obviously, with those four walks. It didn't help that Angel Hernandez was behind the plate. He had uh, whew, he had quite a performance. He was trending on Twitter. And people who don't like the Yankees, okay, people who legitimately loathe the Yankees were defending Glaber Torres because his first two or three at-bats were screwed up by bad Angel Hernandez's calls or bad Angel Hernandez calls behind the plate. So yeah, he's an issue. John Heyman even tweeted that today or today, Sunday should be Angel Hernandez's last game as an umpire. We know that's not going to be the case. We know how that goes. He's very stubborn. He won't ever quit. No, <laughs> he won't ever quit. We have to wait for him to retire. Uh, but for Luis Heal, it's a command problem. Once he gets it under control, hopefully he will, because that was kind of an issue before he got hurt. Um, he should be okay, but they really need to work on that. So he's not wasting so many pitches and walking so many batters and being taken out before he can finish at least five full innings. Again, it was four and one third. So, um, you know, he's electric when he's pitching the right way and striking people out, but the walking is an issue. So he needs to work on that. And uh, on the other end of the ball, let's talk about Gian Carlos Stanton. Uh, what a weekend for him. Now, is he heating up? Or is it like the last blip of a dying patient on the EKG or whatever that is that they show? We'll find out against the Marlins. But Saturday and Sunday were both really good for Stanton on Sunday. He hits a grand slam, and ahead of so uh, ahead of Stanton Soto hit a single. Judge and Rizzo walked, then Stanton hit the grand slam. He also was down 0-2, I believe, in that at bat, and came back and hit that grand slam. It was a 93 mile an hour four seam fastball that got too much of the plate. I think it was slightly in, and yeah, it was a good moment for Stanton. Good moment for the Yankees. You know, I think it felt at that moment, even though the Blue Jays were trying to chip away a little bit later in the game, it felt at that moment that the series was theirs, which was pretty good. Volpe stealing bases, Oswaldo driving him in. Again, the starting rotation will wear down the bullpen, though, if 
only two starters can make it into the sixth inning every turn through the rotation. So they need to do something about that because certain guys are getting tired. Certain guys are getting really tired. Um, as for Saturday, much better than Friday. We'll get into that later. Stanton's hitting again. Home run. Judge hit a home run. The offense scoring off Kevin Gossman and knocking him out early was also good. He only pitched one and one third innings, gave up six runs, five earned. And how about this stat? The offense are 34 and two when Judge and Stanton homer in the same game. Now the offense scoring nine runs, great. Now the problem, <laughs> Schmidt, four and one third innings, two runs on two hits, three walks, four strikeouts. Again, not lasting long enough. 91 pitches in those four and one third innings. So he's putting too much pressure on the bullpen in his start so far. Some guys are tired already. We're not even a full two weeks in. They lost Jonathan Lewise ago. We'll talk more about that in segment three with the pitching um, injury segment that we have coming up. So guys like Luke Weaver and Jake Cousins will get more looks. Ian Hamilton, who started off the year strong, had a rough outing on Saturday. And the Yankees nearly blew the game. They were winning 9-2 at one point. 9-2. And they won 9-8. Whoo! Thank goodness. Uh, that last at bat between Holmes and Springer. Holmes looked great. And he threw, um, were they sweepers? The last two pitches and Springer just kept swinging at him. Thank you, George Springer. And then Friday's game, Marcus Stroman did what I thought he was going to do. He showed out six innings, no runs, three hits, one walk, six strikeouts. He's doing everything to try and win for the Yankees and the offense betrayed him this time. Uh, last time the Yankees won the game, but the defense behind him didn't help him and he didn't get a decision. There was also an earthquake before the game. So it was an exciting game, uh, exciting day on Friday. The game itself, not so great. You say Kikuchi, who the Yankees have seemed to have a success against every other start, <laughs> got the best of them on Friday afternoon, lasted five and a third, didn't give up a run, only gave up four hits, walked two, struck out seven. And the Blue Jays bullpen held the Yankees in check. And out of those four guys, because four guys came in after Kikuchi left, only Chad Green gave up two hits in the ninth inning and picked up the save. So the Yankees are eight and two to start the season. They've been shut out in both losses. Seven nothing against the Diamondbacks the other night and three nothing against the Blue Jays on Friday. So what's the moral of that story? Score. Seems pretty simple. Also, the Judge and Stanton stat. Uh, so they just need to hit home runs in the same game all the time. If they do that, the 2024 Yankees will be like the 1998 Yankees. Easy peasy. I don't know why this is so hard for them to figure out. In all seriousness, fantastic start, start to the season. Sweeping in Houston, winning the series against the National League champion, Arizona Diamondbacks in Arizona, you know, sweeping Houston in in Houston and then facing the, the Blue Jays aren't an easy team to beat. I know the Yankees have made it seem that way lately, but the Blue Jays are a good team. They make the playoffs. They have a team that can explode for runs. We saw that on Saturday. And this is a really good showing for the Yankees. This is a great start. Now they have to keep the foot on the the gas, I guess, so to speak, against the Marlins. We'll preview the first game of that series in segment three. But coming up in segment two, we're going to look at how the miners are doing. It's not going to be, you know, like a full Miners Monday where we get into a lot of stuff because some of the teams are just starting. So we're just going to recap how they did. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button on our videos. Hit the notification so you know when our videos go up. Also, subscribe if you're an audio listener on whatever podcasting platform you listen to. Also, if you're on YouTube, reply to the pinned comment on our videos Monday through Thursday if you want your questions answered for Fan Mail Friday or... Or you can join the Locked on Yankees Insiders Club. The link is in the description. You'll get texts from me. You can text me questions. There's a 14-day free trial, and it's a lot of fun. So again, coming up next, it's Miners Monday.
Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Spring training is over, baseball has started, and you don't want to miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your Prize Picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your Prize Picks entry today. As for the NBA, you can get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. So download the app today and enter code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's code LOCKEDONMLB, all one word, all lowercase letters, and get that first deposit match up to $100. Join prize picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Welcome back. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And don't forget, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the Sirius XM app and search the word Yankees. You can listen to John Sterling, who gets very excited on home run calls. The man is 85 years old. 85 years old. And he's still doing games. Amazing. So it's time for Miners Monday. Checking in on everyone. So Scranton... Womp Womp, lost their series to the Syracuse Mets 3-2. It was a five-game series instead of a six-game series. There was a lot of bad weather. Two games were rained out. One was made up over this past weekend. Another one is being rescheduled for May 23rd. So they lost their home opener on Thursday. But Everson Pereira hit a home run. There's a guy you know. They won on Friday by a score of 8-4. to four. And as a team, Scranton walked 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. That's good. Not good. Saturday, they were swept in a doubleheader. We don't need to talk about that. Let's not talk about the negative. Let's talk about the positive. So they won on Sunday by a score of 7-2. Cody Petit pitched four and one third innings, allowed two runs on two hits. Luis Terenz, Kevin Smith, Luis Gonzalez, who really needs to change his name, sir, please. Uh, Jordan Groshans and Caleb Durbin all contributed to the scoring in a three-run third inning that started the scoring and they ended up winning 7-2. So Scranton goes on the road to face the Norfolk Tides of uh, the Baltimore affiliation, <laughs> the Baltimore system, who just won five out of six against the Charlotte Knights, who were the AAA affiliate for the Chicago White Sox. So it seems the AAA team is doing just as well as their MLB team. Uh, poor Chicago. Anyway, Hudson Valley. Let's look at how they did. They won two out of three against Bowling Green this weekend in Bowling Green. They lost the opener on Friday night, but they won Saturday and Sunday. Speaking of Saturday, Jared Cerna, who Steve spoke about last season, opened the scoring with a home run, and he also hit one on Sunday, but there was a lot of scoring on Saturday. The Renegades won that game 14-2. to two. Pretty good. And on Sunday, the team closed out the series with a 3 0 win. So they had to Rome, not Italy, to face the Emperors, formerly known as the Braves, for a six game set that begins on Tuesday. I had to look that up because I thought, the Emperors, when did that happen? And then I remembered, oh, yes, I kind of remember <laughs> the announcement of them changing their names to the Emperors, which is really fantastic and a fun idea. I love minor league team names um oh what was the Canapolis's name that I loved so much I'll think about it but I just love minor league stadiums I like the teams names I like you know all the goofy jerseys and hats that they do for promotions I wish MLB would do stuff like that it would be so much fun and then Tampa dropped two out of three to the mighty muscles <laughs> muscles as in the seafood, <laughs> who are the single A affiliate of the Minnesota Twins. They're down in Fort Myers. 
They won the opener down there and George Lombard Jr. First round pick for the Yankees the year before, or was it last year? See, I don't remember time, but George Lombard Jr. was a big pick for the Yankees, but he got a hit. Roderick, Roderick Arias had two, but they fell on Saturday and Sunday, 6-4 and 5-2 respectively. They head home to Tampa to start a series against Dun Eden, the Blue Jays single-A affiliate. And speaking of the Jays and Dun Eden, Alec Manoa, who is trying to work his way back to the majors, had a really rough outing against the Lakeland Flying Tigers. He lasted only one and two-third innings. He gave up seven runs on five hits. Six of the runs were earned. He walked four, only struck out two, and he gave up a home run. Now, people who were there, because I follow John Brophy. John Brophy was on the show. Steve and I spoke to him last season because he lives down there and he covers Tampa and he covers a bunch of other teams. And John Brophy was at the game and he tweeted out about Manoa um, just saying that his command wasn't there, obviously, with the four walks and seven runs on five hits. But he looked defeated coming off the mound. John Brophy actually has video of that. So if you have a Twitter, follow John because he has videos and pictures from all different games. I think he's uh, credentialed for Dunedin. So um, yeah, follow him on Twitter. It's really good. But it's just really unbelievable how much Alec Manoa has fallen off. You know, he was a top draft pick. He was, um, he finished high in rookie of the year and he just has not been good since 2022. There's a part of me, the nice part of me feels bad because he's a human and you don't want to see someone who had so much promise go down this path. Now, there's still time for him to turn it around, obviously. He's still really young. Alec Manoa is young. There's still time for him to uh, turn it around. There's still time for him to work on things. And then the other part of me wants to be petty because he started being really bad after he called Garrett Cole, the biggest cheater in Major League Baseball. And what happened after he did that? His career seems to have fallen off a cliff and Garrett Cole won the Cy Young unanimously. What's the lesson in that? The lesson in that is don't talk trash before you have stuff to back it up. Just saying. Also, can we discuss the the Vlad Jr. thing? If you're on audio, I put my finger to my mouth because he did that after he hit his home run to make it 9-3 and hey the Blue Jays almost came back in that game on Saturday <sighs> oh, but uh, I feel like if he was on our team we wouldn't mind that you know and some Yankee fans were saying that they didn't appreciate it let them talk all the smack they want it's funnier when they talk smack and they don't back it up you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> like, it's funny that he hit a home run down 9-3. They end up losing the game and he's doing his shush motion. It's funny. I think it's funny. Just think of it that way. Think of it that way. That, um, you know, like you can, I guess you can get annoyed in the moment, but in the grand scheme of things, it's funny when guys do things like that and then their team doesn't win. On the opposite side, you know, the Yankees pulled off or, you know, did some shenanigans. Which year was that? 21? Against Houston or 22? No, 21. Um, the Yankees were up like 7-2 in the Sunday game against Houston. You know, Sanchez hit a home run. Judge hit a home run. Sanchez had the jacket on. They were doing all this stuff. And then Houston walked off against them. So <laughs> it's that kind of a situation. You know, if it's your team, you love it. If it's the other team, you hate it. I don't know. But as for Manoa... As a human, I want him to do better. I do. I don't want his career to end like this. I don't think it will. I think he still has time to turn things around. And hopefully he will. Because you need competitors like that in MLB. You just don't need them to talk so much trash before they can back it up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Coming up next, previewing the first game between the Yankees and the Marlins, which will be happening after the eclipse, thanks to MLB's uh, brain. Because... Do you want a bunch of baseball outfielders and infielders looking up at a sun that might blind you? No. Also, what is up with all the elbow injuries lately?
If you're looking for tickets for just about anything, check out the app Game Time. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and shows near you. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to moments before your event starts and even an hour after it starts. It's the place for last minute tickets. So if you decide to go to a game that starts at 6.05 and it's 5.30, you can probably get tickets for it. In fact, I used Game Time to buy two tickets for tonight's game against the Marlins, and I was shocked by how easy it was. You can also find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for basketball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. For a limited time, all users can get $20 off any Major League Baseball purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app with code First Pitch. Terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off. And it's until April 14th only. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And remember, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SiriusXM app and search the word Yankees. So let's preview tonight's game against the Marlins, which was supposed to be 2.05, but is now 6.05 because it's not smart having a game during an eclipse. I know it was supposed to be like a cool gimmick, and that's why I got the tickets, and now I can't go because I have to record the show. So hmm, I guess my first game of 2024 is going to have to wait. So it's Nestor Cortez against Jesus Lazardo. Lazardo first uh, so far this season, he's pitched two games. Actually, he's pitched the same days, obviously, Nestor opening day and April 2nd. So opening day against Pittsburgh, he went five innings, two runs on two hits with two walks, eight strikeouts, but did not get the decision. Against the Angels on April 2nd, five and one third innings, three runs on four hits with two walks and five strikeouts. He picked up the loss. As for Cortez against Houston, we all know five innings, four runs on five hits with two walks and five strikeouts did not get the decision. And against Arizona on the second five innings, three runs on eight hits with two walks and two strikeouts got the loss. Now the Marlins finally won because they didn't have a win. They finally won. I believe they won 10 one against uh, the Cardinals. So I was worried about that because you know, when a team has a really long losing streak and you really don't want to be the first team to lose to them, so I'm glad it's not going to be the Yankees. I will have, uh, we'll have previews for each game as they happen. Because at first I was going to do a whole preview of the series. And then this pitching stuff pop popped up. Because uh, on Saturday we found out that Jonathan Loisega is out for the season with a torn UCL. But he's not having Tommy John. He's already had Tommy John. So he's not having Tommy John. Now, um... Dr. Kevin Meister did an initial reading of the MRI, which was performed on Thursday in New York. He suggests that Loisaga could afford, uh, avoid, afford, avoid undergoing what would be his second career Tommy John surgery with the estimated recovery for Meister's uh, preferred procedure spanning 10 to 12 months. I'm not sure what the procedure is. I don't know if it's going to be one of those internal brace surgeries that some of the guys on the Rays have had. Because I've mentioned this on the show before, but in the last few years, since 2021, the Rays have had six or seven starting pitchers go out with elbow injuries. I believe three have gotten Tommy John and three have gotten the internal brace. Tyler Glass now is one of the guys who got uh, Tommy John. I think Shane McClanahan got the brace surgery, but don't quote me on that. But even in just that organization, that's a lot of pitching injuries in such a short amount of time. So uh, his last appearance against Arizona, which was really good, and he felt the elbow thing on, I believe it was his last pitch of the outing, might be Loisaga's last, which is really disappointing because there was so much promise with him. And, you know, during that appearance, you saw that promise. He pitched really well. 
So he'll be a free agent after this season. So unless the Yankees, you know, take a flyer on him and, and say, well, you've done some stuff for us. Maybe we'll bring you back. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, across baseball, Spencer Strider of the Braves has a sprained UCL. He'll also be seeing Dr. I don't know if it's Meister or Meister later this week. There's no decision on Tommy John surgery yet. It's possible. And if that happens, but even so, having a sprained UCL isn't good. But if he has to have Tommy John or even the internal brace surgery, that's a big loss for the Braves. But there seems to be an uptick in injuries to pitchers, especially elbow injuries. So what is happening? What is going on? Is it, there's a lot of talk about, is it the pitch clock? Is it the fact that guys are throwing so hard? I always kind of joke about how guys are throwing so hard and how it can't be a good thing for them, but it feels like it's not a good thing for them. So the, uh, the Major League Baseball Players Association put out a statement basically blaming the pitch clock. This was from executive director and former Yankee Tony Clark. Despite unanimous player opposition and significant concerns concerning health and safety, the commissioner's office reduced the length of the pitch clock last December, just one season removed from imposing the most significant rule change in decades. Since then, our concerns about the health impacts of reduced recovery time have only intensified. The league's unwillingness thus far to acknowledge or study the effects of these profound changes is an unprecedented threat to our game and its most valuable asset the players now baseball responded <laughs> they're fighting back and forth on twitter by the way the players association follows me on twitter which always makes me feel weird but this is from major league baseball this statement ignores the empirical evidence and much more significant long-term trend over multiple decades of velocity and spin increases that are highly correlated with arm injuries. Nobody wants to see pitchers get hurt in this game, which is why MLB is currently undergoing a significant comprehensive research study into the causes of this long-term increase. Interviewing prominent medical experts across baseball, which to date has been consistent with an independent analysis by John Hopkins University that found no evidence to support that the introduction of the pitch clock has increased injuries. In fact, JHU found no evidence that pitchers who worked quickly in 2023 were more likely to sustain an injury than those who worked less quickly on average. JHU also found no evidence that pitchers who sped up their pace were more likely to sustain an injury than those who did not. Well, all right. So what do you think? I think it's a combination of everything. I really do. I think the pitch clock may have something to do with it, but I really think the the sticky stuff ban has something to do with it. Tyler Glass now blamed it on the the sticky stuff ban. He banned he, ban. he blamed his elbow injury on it. Um, I think it's a combination of the pitch clock, the sticky stuff ban, and the fact that these guys are throwing the way they're throwing. And there was a quote from, I think it was Doctor Job, the one that invented the Tommy John surgery, who was saying that the ligament doesn't fully mature until you're 26. And he said that it used to be that most of his surgeries were done on Major League Baseball players. But in recent years, it's gotten to the point where more little leaguers and high schoolers are having Tommy John surgeries because these kids are doing things with their elbows that they shouldn't be doing. So it's a whole thing with the elbow. It's the year of the elbow, apparently. Um, I mean, heck, even Garrett Cole is out because of his elbow problem. Thankfully, it's not a Tommy John situation, but I don't think this is the end of it. And I think we're going to see more pitchers get injured as the year goes on, you know, because as much as it's you know, it's fun to see someone throw 100 miles an hour, but it's also a little nerve wracking because you're thinking a human arm is not supposed to throw anything that hard. The motion is weird. If you look in um, at still shots of what the elbow looks like when a guy is in the middle of a pitch, it's really unnatural looking and it looks like it could tear apart at any second. So I don't know what the solution is. I really don't. But something needs to be done. I don't know what, though. It's just scary because I feel like you can watch a baseball game and at any moment someone's arm is going to get injured. So 
That's what's happening with baseball. One more time, don't forget to join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. There's a link in the description below and a 14-day free trial. You get texts from me. You can text me questions. And speaking of that, leave your questions under the pinned comment. To get your questions answered for Fan Mail Friday, if you join the Insiders Club, you get top priority. But if you leave your question on YouTube, I'll still answer it. And the last reminder, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SiriusXM app and search the word Yankees. So tomorrow, hopefully, you will meet my new co-host and we will talk about the Eclipse game. That should be something. So that's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Yankees. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias and I will see you tomorrow. 